this lecture we'll be discussing about uh, Surajit Sinha, a brief introduction about him. He was a cultural anthropologist from Bengal and who studied the way of life of the groups in order to, and I quote, fully grasp the nature of social interaction between them, that is, the various groups that are present in the society. His famous book, Field Studies on the People on India, Methods and Perspectives, which was published in 1978. The methodology that he used was mainly folk urban continuum. His contribution, he was really interested in understanding about the tribal and caste interactions in a country like India. And he created a model for understanding the process of transformation. Transformation, how? tribes transformed into castes and what happened thereafter. He used the concepts and he also proposed the concepts like tribal peasant continuum, which we'll be discussing later in the lecture, Bhumaj Kshatriya continuum. He studied the scheduled tribes of West Bengal and Bihar and he found that tribals became integrated with the regional Hindu caste. So because he was very much interested in how the tribes were transforming and also how they were integrating within the castes. According to Sinha, the growth of a unified view of Indian civilization in spite of the fact that it contained innumerable substrata of cultural beliefs and practices is due to the structure of its traditions. So he says that although there are so many differences, so many beliefs, cultural practices, traditions and everything is so different, even then the growth of India has been in a unified manner and also the civilization, not India alone, the growth of the civilization as well has been in a unified manner because of the structure of India's tradition. He says that there is a link between the little and the great traditions. Now, if you remember little and great traditions, we have already discussed it. And this is how he said that it has created a historical reality where there has been a transformation, but also a synthesis of the little tradition and also the great tradition of India. He studied this with the use of civilizational approach, which was first designed by Robert Redfield in his study of folk society in Mexico. So what are the features? The features of such society, the folk societies are they are small, they are isolated, the members of such society are non-literate, they are homogeneous, there is group solidarity and kinship. And there's a common culture which is rooted in tradition and religion of that community. Now, he said that little and great tradition are constantly in touch with each other. They are always interacting. This is what is known as folk urban continuum where the urban based civilization transforms, which is evolutionary in nature. What happens when the little society or the little tradition it transforms into a great tradition? How does it happen? It happens because there is a there is some kind of interaction between the two. Otherwise, it is not possible. See, we have seldom seen that if you have visited a village perhaps 20 years ago and you visit the same village today, you'll see there is a contrasting difference. Mm, it could be in the form of people's attitude, it could be in the form of infrastructure, the technology available, the facilities available. So how is all this happening? Is it merely the growth of the society? There has to be some kind of interaction. You know how we are trying to speak up for the local businesses. People are, uh, you know, turning more towards the homegrown business. They are supporting them. So what is happening actually? There is a constant interaction and only due to this interaction, the civilization is transforming and this is evolutionary in nature. That means it keeps on evolving. Something that was just a village with no facilities, maybe not even the basic facilities, say 20 years ago, has been transformed today and 
maybe is providing a platform for many of the people living in that village they are earning their livelihoods from various sources which may have been restricted to only farming perhaps a few years ago so this folk urban continuum is what he studied he his study focused on explaining and analyzing the growth and the expansion of the society we'll take the same example the village which was there 20 years ago it was in a very original form and thus it was very simple now if you compare that village from a city it is pretty obvious that a city would be very complex it will be in a very complex form the relations are complex the division of labor is complex and that is what he wanted to study that how it expanded now the villages have changed as well the women who were only supposed to do the household work they are engaging in labor today even in villages so how this happened how it expanded from the original core which was very simple in nature to the modern complex form that is present today so he said it is through a process called assimilation and mixture and this happened again because of the interaction now he said that orthogenetic development of civilization in india from a primitive cultural level has happened so he tra- he studied the transformation of central indian tribes and the structure of this civilization he gave credit to the structure of india's tradition which being so diverse at one point but has the ability to contain the various beliefs practices and cultures so he says that there is definitely a link between little and the great tradition which becomes a transformation which results into a transformation and a synthesis of the two his famous study of the shitur tribes of bengal and bihar and bhumich tribes especially so he uh, focused mainly on the following themes tribe caste and tribe peasant continuum levels of economic initiative and ethnic groups tribal movements sociology of religion and field studies on the people of india so he was basically interested in the study of tribal caste interactions how the tribals became integrated with the regional hindu caste system so this is what his interests lied in to study how tribes changed how they evolved the tribal and the emergent level of hindu peasantry were the two levels of the socio cultural system which he took into consideration and on the basis of this he did his study now some of the characteristics that he took was habitat economy social structure and the ideological system on which they worked so the tribals on one hand and the hindu peasantry on the other hand they acted as the two levels on which he did his study and he compared these two to understand the integration of the two and what was happening as a result so there were some other concepts proposed by him like tribal peasant continuum bhumij kshatriya continuum which were based on the same thing that interaction on the basis of certain characteristics led to transformation synthesis etc and to understand the processes the things that were happening the transformation that was happening he used these concepts that were proposed by him more and more in basically central india to understand this phenomena let us discuss some questions now surajit sinha's work was mainly based on so if you'll see the options he did his field studies he was very interested in tribe caste continuum he was also interested in tribal movements that we will study in the next lecture and he was also interested in sociology of religion so the answer will be option number 4 all of the above 
Next question, who, who viewed tribes as a system of social relations as well as a state of mind and cultural traditions? So it was Surajit Sinha who viewed tribes as a, as a system of social relations because he said that although there are so many social relations, social patterns, cultures, beliefs, even then there is an integration and a unified um, transformation and development of the civilization. So the answer will be option number two, Surajit Sana. I hope you got this lecture. Thank you for watching.